Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you the nine applications you should install every time you install a, a Linux distribution. With every distribution that you install, um, they all come with a different set of applications. But I think the nine that I'm going to say now are the ones that I would install and replace every other app that's on the pre-installed um, system. So we can start off, uh, the most important one for me is Google Chrome. Uh, every system needs a web browser and arguably with a good web browser, you don't actually need any other software. If you think about it, a web browser gives you access to music, video, gives you access to productivity tools like Office Suites. It gives you uh, access to your email, gives you access to everything. So arguably you don't need any other application on your system once you've got Google Chrome. Now I picked Google Chrome for a reason. Um, there are obviously when you install a distribution um, they, they quite often come with either Firefox, some go, come with Chromium, some come with Ice Weasel. Uh, the distributions come with all different kinds of web browser. For me, Chrome is the standard bearer. It's the best one, uh, if you, especially if you use Google's other tools like the, the Google Mail, the Photos, uh, anything to do with Google. Um, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't use Google Chrome. You can download it for free. You can store it really easily and it works. Now, the, the one major criticism of Chrome uh, that, that you'll get is the amount of memory it uses. I don't actually subscribe to that sort of criticism because if you think about what a web browser has to do it is phenomenal start off every single html page it has to be able to render it doesn't matter how people write that html it has to be able to render that html and that's the simple that's just that's that's the straightest the most straightforward part of it then you have the CSS, the styling, and there's so many different combinations of styling that you can have for a web page to be able to render every HTML and CSS um, style. It, it, it's, it's, it's no wonder it takes so much memory, but then let's not stop there. JavaScript, every single JavaScript command with all the different frameworks that run within a web browser has to be able to run within one tab of a web browser. If you think about that, it's no wonder that a single tab takes two, three hundred megabytes of memory. So um, you do get lightweight browsers, but they don't often work very well. Now, I would accept Chromium um, if, Chrome, if Google Chrome wasn't available. Um, I would always go Chromium over Firefox, I just think it works better. It has it's obviously the same tooling as Chrome, uh, but um, for me, Chrome is the number one. Uh, the other thing to point out is if you're a software developer, Chrome also has ACE development tools. So you press F12 and you can um, see the elements of a web page. You can go into the console. Um, you can see if there's any errors logged to the console. You can see the source for. Um, every web page, you see how the network's in. I mean, this is all running and this this piece of software is 100% free to use, yet you get all this functionality. I think Chrome has to be the number one piece of software that you install um, on any operating system. So the next application is uh, Evolution. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Uh, you can see my inbox here. Um, as you can see, the inbox for Everyday Linux user is mainly spam. Um, I don't get many actual genuine emails through this mailbox. But if you want an application in Linux that's as close to Microsoft Outlook, and I think we can agree that Microsoft Outlook is one of Microsoft's best products, then Evolution is the closest you're going to get. Now, when I was uh, reviewing Evolution, I said that they had tools such as a task manager, they had a calendar, and they didn't interlink particularly well, and the mail program 
that it just wouldn't connect to my Gmail account. Evolution connects to Gmail without any hassles at all. You just have to authorize it. There are contacts. There's a calendar, the tasks, and memos, and all of these things are linked together with your Google tools. So if I create a, a reminder on the 17th, so this afternoon, I might need to go and take some recycling. All I have to do is And then I can choose when it's going to be and at what time. So let's say 2.30 p.m. Save and close. It's there. So now you can see um, I created one for getting Christmas cards for my wife. That's in my Google account. I didn't do that in Evolution. It's shown up here. This is a task, so it won't appear in your calendar, but you can see that it's shown in the task list. So yeah, Evolution, um, for me, is the best mail program for Linux. Uh, notable alternatives, obviously, Thunderbird would be my next um, choice. Other than that, I don't think there's any that um, I would use over just using the default Gmail uh, within the web browser. OK, so from a productivity point of view, uh, office suites. Uh, the standard bearer for Microsoft is obviously Microsoft Office. Uh, you have Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and Visio. Well, it's no wonder that in Linux the standard bearer is LibreOffice. You have a set of tools that are as good, uh, almost as good as Microsoft Office. Uh, Excel, there's no product that's as close to Excel when it comes to um, the offering that that brings. But LibreOffice Calc does a really good job for most most uh, things. You can add your, your code in the background for that. Uh, so let's have a look at a few of them. So here's LibreOffice Writer. So here's LibreOffice Writer. As you can see, you've got the ribbon bar at the top. You've got all these icons down the right-hand side, and you can just start typing. Now, um, I haven't installed the Microsoft fonts onto here, so I'm stuck with the ones that come with Evolution. But uh, um, So I can put a title. And as you can see, it works as you'd expect a word processor to work. Um, Uh, you've got tables, you've got forms, uh, obviously spell checking, thesaurus, all those sort of things, the development tools. Uh, nine, I'd say, I, I don't know if I'd go up to 90% of what's here is also in Word, so Word might have a few more features, but for general everyday use, for the average person, LibreOffice has everything you need. So I won't save that. Um, so the next one we're going to do, don't need the writer again. Uh, LibreOffice Calc. Um, this is still all to do with LibreOffice. So this is still the, th the third application on the list. Uh, for most people, um, this is a great spreadsheet package. It's not Excel. There's nothing beats Excel as far as I'm concerned. I've been a software developer for a long time, and I just don't think there's a more versatile application than Excel. I think it's it's still Microsoft standard bearer. Uh, but this is a good package. For 99% of people, especially in home use, especially for school use, LibreOffice Calc is perfect. So, um, f for example, let's create a, a basic sheet here. 
and we're going to have um, ID, we're going to have a name, we're going to have a salary, and we're going to have a department. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have Steve with Tom, Alice, Kerry and Mike. So there's the department. So I want to know oh, what's the total salary of the department. So equal sum, and you could drag down, and it works. And then you could do all sorts of things like grouping it by department. You can uh, format this into a nice style. There's all sorts of things you can do here. You could. You can protect the sheet, you can add forms, there's macros as you would with um, Excel. And this product has become so good over the years, it, it really is good for um, most people's use. So um, if I take that away, for instance, I can go there, tools, pivot table. And now you can just drag the columns into the way you want it to be. As you see, you can format that as, um, how you want it, and it, you, the, you'll get a good sort of like formatting for uh, so it's easy to manipulate your data and get it to come out the way you want it to be. Um, the example I gave there is not a, a great one. Uh, the next one, LibreOffice and Press, all still part of this LibreOffice suite. LibreOffice and Press is the same as Microsoft PowerPoint, and I've used this for years to create presentations. Um, I, I don't use um, Microsoft PowerPoint. I think this is just as good, um, if not better. It's it's a great tool. Uh, and finally, we have uh, LibreOffice Draw. So anyone who's ever had to use Microsoft Visio uh, or draw.io to create diagrams. Um, that's what draw is for. So if I want to create a simple thing here, uh, it, it's good for creating process diagrams. So we could do start uh, and then we can create another one here. engine so the idea is maybe you've got an application click start it sends some data through the rule engine and then finish with output data so it's really stupid sort of like example of this but the point being, that's what um, LibreOffice draws for, is for, for creating diagrams. Uh, it's not an art tool for creating pictures like uh, GIMP or Paint or something like that. It's very much the same as uh, Visio. Number four on the list is an audio player. It's Rhythm Box. Uh, this is for people who um, have their music still um, installed on their computer hard drives or have locally stored music. Uh, as you can see, uh, Rhythm Box is the, the best one as far as I'm concerned. It's got more features than any other audio program. There are a few um, except, uh, other examples that are good. Uh, Clementine, I really like. Uh, Banshee's quite good. The Quad Libre is also quite good. But uh, yeah, uh, Rhythm Box for me is the better one of the, lot, uh, of the world. Uh, as you can see, I've got all my artists at the top here. I haven't installed every um, artist I've got. I've just done a, a, a sample. And so I can 
play that album there if I want to. I'm not going to because of copyright reasons. But you can see um, all my songs are there. Uh, playlists, you can add a new playlist in. Click the plus button there and you can just do new playlist. And so I can call it punk. And then what I do is I go back to my music and for instance, I can go to Green Day and I can put American Idiot into my punk playlist. And you can see it's there. And then I can go to Sex Pistols. Uh, as you can see, that's how easy it is to build up a playlist. You, you'll notice there's an automatic playlist function. Um, so the automatic playlist gives you a playlist based on criteria. So um, if you wanted to do... Uh, for instance, something for Valentine's Day, um, you could say title contains love or something like that. It's, uh, but these these can change, so you can do um, a genre. So if I really want to create an automatic playlist, I could say contains punk. Uh, and you can limit it to a number of songs. So I could have 10 songs or I could do number of minutes, um, size, uh, and then you can sort it by artist, um, you can sort it, sort it by genre, whatever you want to do. Uh, so if I click new now, I can call that new punk playlist. And I've got a, <laughs> ironically it's just picked post-punk as the, the option because it doesn't see the Sex Pistols as punk. Apparently, it's got that as metal, which it really isn't. Uh, that's to do with how my music was categorised um, when I converted it in the first place. So it's not really um, Rhythm Box's fault that it's picked up Sex Pistols as well. So if I go for a new playlist, and this time I say, um, genre contains rock. I limit it to 10 songs. You can see this time I've got... <laughs> it's giving me all AFI this time. The point being is that it will um, create a playlist based on criteria. Uh, I think it's because I'm sorting by artist rather than genre. Uh, so if I go... We'll try this one more time. Genre contains rock. Limited to 10 songs. New rock playlist. <laughs> it's still come up with AFI. Oh my goodness. Uh, but anyway, that's how it works. Uh, Rhythm Box um, has loads of other features. So uh, you have podcasts. Uh, so you can add in podcasts from various sources. So if I wanted to search for one about Linux, uh, you can see I've got all these podcasts and all I have to do is... It's got all the different uh, episodes of that podcast, so I can just listen to them if I want to. I can subscribe to that podcast. It's a nice feature. Uh, there's Last FM. You you have to be um, subscribed to Last FM and log in, and then you get to play via that. There's Libre FM as well, and then there's radio stations. So you can choose different radio stations. To start. You, you can add more in here, um, but you need to know the URL of the, the radio station. So uh, as you can see, that's a, a fairly powerful program. There is another feature of Rhythm Box, which I'm going to save for a separate video, which is you can make uh, Rhythm Box a audio server, which means you can then play the music from your computer through your phone, um, uh, through other devices. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good feature. And, and that is Rhythm Box. So number five on the list is VLC. Uh, it's a media player. You get all sorts of media players uh, um, when you install different Linux distributions. 
uh, VLC is used worldwide, not just on Linux, but on Windows as well. It, there's not much to talk about here. Uh, it's just if you want to play local video, um, then VLC supports a whole load of formats and it just works. Here's a picture from the, here's a video from the top of the Freedom Tower in New York. As you see, amazing views. Yeah, so uh, there are other features. You can play uh, multiple files at the same time. You can open a network stream so you can play um, videos from a particular network. Uh, you can open a capture device so I could do my webcam. Uh, you can convert and save videos to different formats and you can create playlists. So, yep, that's for me, VLC is the best uh, media player for Linux. So next on the list, we have GIMP. And here's a picture I drew earlier, you know, um, with my solid art skills. You know, my second career, if I wasn't a software developer, would obviously be to draw mountains and trees and foliage and stuff. Uh, all joking aside, um, I've just taken a sc screenshot and loaded it in here. Um, I'm not skillful enough to use this program, really. But I do edit the odd picture here and there. Uh, and for people who come from a um, Photoshop background, well, the, here we have um, GIMP. And it is the best um, art, um, image editing program there is for Linux. I'm not going to say much more about it. I, I've don't really, I'm not skillful enough to know how all of this works. I know how to create basic images, but I know this is the best you're going to get for um, Linux. Number seven on the list is Caden Live. Uh, Caden Live is a video edi editing app. Uh, so if you make YouTube videos or any sort of videos uh, as I do, then this is for me the best uh, video editing app there is for Linux. There are uh, some other not notable ones. I've created videos about this in the past. There's Open Shot, there's Shotcut, but for me, uh, Caden Live is the standard bearer. I've used that word a lot in this uh, video. Uh, essentially, you can create title clips, you can basically drag and drop your video clips in, you can clip parts of the video, you can stitch, you can render to many different formats, and Caden Live is really easy to use and you can add transition effects. It's just, for me, the, the best that there is for Linux and I, I really enjoy using it. Number eight on the list is Shotwell. Uh, this allows you to view um, all your photos. Uh, it's probably the best one for Linux. Uh, as you can see, it's pulling through lots of images from my pictures folder. I've only done 48, I've got, obviously got thousands, but this is for a demo purpose. Uh, so you can view based on month. Uh, I quite like the rounded corners on this, so I can... So you can view the photos like that. I mean, when it comes to image viewers and photo viewers, they're all much of a muchness. It's just Shotwell is the one that comes with most distributions and it's got more features than the basic ones that you get, um, say, for elementary. I mean, you've got red eye removal, you can adjust it, you can enhance, uh, you can mark faces, <laughs> um, the faces of people in photos. Um, You can rotate, you can look at the image tags, you can do slideshows. Uh, there's so many different features. Uh, obviously, uh, Shotwell compared to the other applications probably isn't as as important. But if you, you know, if you want to look for your photo collection, it's a it's a good tool. A picture of every more uh, there. So yeah, that's uh, shot well. That's number eight in the list. So if I select all of these like this, so 
today because we're going to do a slideshow. <laughs> Some of them are screenshots from various proportions, but then you get, so as you can see, you can do a slideshow and you can scroll through the images on your computer. You can click on the settings here and you can have transition effects. So let's do chess and you can have the delay every, so in this case I'm going to do it every two seconds. And every two seconds it's going to change the image. Last but not least on this list of applications, this one's for the software developers out there. Uh, and if you are a JavaScript, a C Sharp um, a, um, developer, then I would recommend installing VS Code onto your machine. Uh, I'm sure you already knew that though. It's the best IDE there is for Linux in terms of um, for JavaScript or for C Sharp. Uh, I don't know about Python, I'm not a Python developer per se, uh, so but yeah if you are a JavaScript developer you've got all these extensions um, that you can install uh, and there's the extensions, as you can see there's some for Python as well so I guess Python is um, a, a, a good place to develop Python software is also VS Code. Um, I've used uh, VS Code, I, I, I use Visual Studio in my day job, um, but um, I've developed mainly Windows software for that. But when I develop at home, I'm using React here, uh, I'm using VS Code for that. Uh, and if you, uh, th this is a basic demo of a CV creator and it enables to generate a CV and there's many different components that I've created along the way and I did it all using VS Code and uh, then I deployed it up to GitHub and you can search for um, this tool if you want it uh, but yeah Visual Studio Code is the best IDE for developing software within Linux. It is Microsoft but it's still the best there is. Um, I'm not about bashing a company just because of their name. And I think Microsoft have developed some great applications over the years. VS Code is uh, one of them. And that is the end of the video. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for watching future videos from Everyday Linux user. If you've got any comments to make about other applications, Obviously, um, over the next few weeks, I'll be um, suggesting other applications that are alternatives to the ones I've listed today. And you may feel like I've missed some of the list, but these are the nine that I install every time I install a version of Linux. And when it comes down to it, you can look at every distribution you install, but when it comes down to it, you only need a desktop environment that you like to use and then it's all about the applications you install uh, so there isn't much difference between all the distributions other than the desktop environments they 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 use by default the package management tools they use by default and the default um, applications so Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.